Hello everyone! In this video, I am going to show you how to make transparent plastic from seaweed. Packaging from such a material not only decomposes well in nature, but can also be consumed along with food it is wrapped around. I think many of you have heard about the issue of plastic pollution. Unfortunately, this incredibly cheap and long-lived material, for instance such as polyethylene, is used only one time and after that people dispose of it and buy a new item from it. This is clearly the case with packaging films for a variety of products, ranging from vegetables to sandwiches. Because of that, nowadays only around 10% of plastic in the world is recycled and the rest of plastic will be decomposing at the landfill sites and in accidental litter piles for hundreds of years. In the last 50 years, there even formed a whole plastic island in the Pacific Ocean, which is roughly the size of France. The floating waste materials are slowly breaking down under the influence of the sun and the water and are being carried all around the planet. Nowadays, the small plastic bees are so spread out all around the world that they are even found in intestines of Antarctic kinds penguins. In other worlds, there are almost no places left on Earth where there hasn't been at least a bit of plastic waste. That is why today the issue of plastic pollution is as relevant as never before, and therefore we need to invent new biodegradable materials, which we could dispose of anywhere without fearing that they will pollute the environment. In this video, I am going to explain methods of obtaining such materials. I am going to use Irish moss, which is a species of red algae, which grows abundantly along the rocky parts of the Atlantic coast of Europe and North America. The thing is, a natural thickening substance called carrageenan makes up around 80% of Irish moss. This chemical helps better retain moisture and also gives the plant stems necessary hardness. The first step in the production of such plastic is soaking such dry seaweed in potassium hydroxide solution. To do that, I am pouring 200 grams of potassium hydroxide into a big beaker and then I am adding 2 liters of water to it. When it dissolved and the solution became transparent, I started heating it up to 60 degrees Celsius. When the needed temperature was reached, I added 100 grams of dry seaweed and I left it for 2 hours. During that time, potassium hydroxide reacts with carrageenan molecules, robbing them of so-called sulfonate groups and creating free 6 anhydrogalactose. As a result, seaweed turns into very film gel and proteins or carbohydrates present in it are released into the solution. Two hours later, I am pouring out the solution and receiving such semi ready seaweed. Now this mass is no longer seaweed, but rather their gel skeleton, resembling alien tentacles from the War of the Wars film. However, such seaweed soaked in alkali has a particular smell and to me it smells like raw fish or algae. I decided to sanitize the obtained raw material with a regular chlorine bleach solution, which not only will kill all the bacteria, but also will make it snow white. Before sanitizing and bleaching, I will the gel in the blender. I am going to bleach it in a 1% bleach solution. An hour later, Carrageenan becomes snow white, it was cleansed of the smell and possibly pathogenic bacteria. After bleaching, I am rinsing the gel with water, but I am still not happy with the smell of chlorine, which is still present in the white carrageenan. In order to get rid of some unpleasant smell, I am pouring water over this gel, and I am adding 50 ml of 50% sodium disulfate solution and also half a gram of ascorbic acid. These two chemicals have to reduce the leftover bleach in this mess and also remove leftover chloramines which formed during bleaching, which gives this solution a nasty chlorine smell. Two hours later, I am raising the carrageenan again 
and I almost can smell chlorine. To be on the safe side, I left the gel soak in pure water for 12 hours in order to completely wash away the leftover chlorine from the solution. After tasting the solution with pH paper and final rinsing, I got a so-called semi-purified kappa carrageenan, which can be either be dried or used for making edible plastic right away. I decided not to wait until the carrageenan dried and just calculated the percentage of water in the obtained gel, which turned out to be 85%. To make edible plastic, besides carrageenan, I will also need starch, sorbitol and regular pharmacy glycerin. I took recipes for making edible plastic from scientific articles. Following the first recipe of edible plastic, I am mixing 15 grams of the rough gel and 7 grams of starch, and to make the texture smoother, I am adding 1 gram of glycerin. After that, I am pouring in 50 ml of water and mix it all with a coffee whisk mixture. Carrageenan and starch almost don't dissolve in cold water. That is why in order to dissolve the components, I am going to heat this mess in the microwave until it starts boiling. After that, I mix the mess with a whisk mixture adding boiled water until all lumps are dissolved. In order to evenly spread the mess over a flat surface, in my case, I stuck cardboard levelers, which will make it a lot easier to regulate the thickness of my layer. Thickness of the layer is 3 mm, and according to my calculations, the thickness of the ready film will be about 200 micrometers. Now I just need to wait until the layer of the sheet pan dries. Along with the first recipe, I also found one more recipe of DIY edible plastic. Following this other recipe, I weighted out 3 grams of moist carrageenan into another beaker, 3 grams of starch, 2 grams of pharmacy glycerin, and also 2 grams of sorbitol, which is a sweetener added to chewing gums. After mixing the mess with a half liter of water and boiling it in the microwave oven, I also mix it with mixture again to get a smooth liquid. Now I am pouring the liquid into non-stick pans in order for plastic to come off pans easier. In order to speed up drying, I am sending these pans into the oven to dry for 5 hours. After it was dried, I can check what I got. Basically, just as I anticipated, the sheet pan turned out to be not the best flat surface for the film, because after drying it stuck to it very firmly. But this problem can be easily be fixed. We just need to moist the film with water. After soaking in water, the film became much softer and it could easily go off the pan. At my first attempt, I got quite thick films. When the plastic completely dried, it became quite hard and, along with that, quite crispy. That is why I think it is the time for my second attempt. This time it looks a lot more promising. I was really pleasantly surprised by the last film. It was almost perfect without any holes or uneven surface. This film is completely edible. To demonstrate it, I decided to find a practical use for such a plastic. I made my favorite sandwich, and to preserve its beauty for longer, I decided to wrap my sandwich in a DIY edible plastic, which will prevent it from drying. If you fail to unwrap such a sandwich in a hurry, you can eat it along with the edible plastic wrap. By the way, it tastes quite well, sorbitol makes it taste a bit sweet, and along with that, it doesn't spoil the taste of food. Besides food, you can also wrap soap in such plastic. Instead of throwing away polyethylene wrapping every time, you can just wash this wrapping away into your sink. However, in my opinion, the coolest thing about this DIY edible plastic is that you can reuse it. I took all of my previous films and just dissolved them in hot water, adding 1 gram of glycerin. After drying, the new film turned out to be even better than all my previous ones, and it can be used to wrap all new food. The advantage of this plastic is that you can just throw it away. It's completely biodegradable and decomposes in nature in just a couple of days.
So, I think this video was useful for you. And if you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to get to know more new and interesting.